for a change of pace. I'm going to speak to you about the next mission that will launch to Mars. We launch uh, next year on the 5th of May. And so by the next AGU, we'll be on the surface of Mars. And hopefully two AGUs from now, we'll be having uh, data to uh, tell you about. So uh, you probably are familiar with the Mars missions that have explored the surface in great detail. We've seen evidence of past water. We've seen geochemical evidence that suggests that early environments may have been hospitable to the formation of life. But what you may or may not know is that all of that, or a lot of that water that once flowed on the surface of Mars and interacted with the rock uh, actually has been released via volcanoes. So when volcanoes uh, produce lava, they also allow uh, gases to form in the, to come out into the atmosphere. So only by really understanding the whole picture of Mars' evolution, the interior, as well as what's going on the surface, can we fully understand uh, the history of Mars and the history of possible habitability on Mars. So um, who, who's, who's advancing? Oh, thanks. Okay, so um, even though we are a mission going to Mars, what we are really about is understanding the early evolution of planets. And you may know that planets start out as uh, lumps of dust that accumulate from the, the nebula, around, from the disk around the sun. And as those um, uh, blocks come together, next please, uh, they create larger and larger pieces. So uh, as many of them come together, uh, they start to uh, have enough kinetic energy that they start to melt in the, si in the inside. Um, the pressure also causes them to heat up in the inside. And then uh, for the ones that are large enough to become planets, they actually completely melt. And so uh, what we're really trying to understand is this process of how things go from this molten mass to the structure that we know all planets have. We know that all rocky planets have a core, a core, a mantle, and a crust. And those are uh, you know, separated by their chemistry. So that the heavier elements are more concentrated in the core, the lighter elements more concentrated in the crust. Um, and it turns out that Mars is kind of in the sweet spot for understanding this process. You know, everything that we know in detail about how this has happened comes from seismic data for the Earth and seismic data for the Moon. So um, the, the great thing about Mars is that it's um, both a lot larger than the moon. Uh, the moon uh, you know, went through this process, but the crust that it formed is a very different composition than the crust of the Earth. And in fact, the pressure on the inside of the moon at the, at the depth of, at the center of Mars, it's only about equivalent to about 300 kilometers inside the interior of the Earth. So the chemistry, the, the phase transitions, the uh, minerals that form, Inside the, inside the moon are very different than those deep in the interior of the Earth. But for Mars, um, it's a much bigger planet. We expect a lot of the same phase transitions, so we'll be to, expect to be able to understand somehow some of how these early processes worked on Mars. Um, the other th interesting thing about Mars is that it's, um, it's big enough to have these phase transitions, but it um, preserves its early crust. So on the Earth, we have plate tectonics. So that early crust that formed on the Earth is essentially all gone. So we don't really have any record of how that early crust, how thick it was initially, and really what those processes were that allowed that early crust to form. So on Mars, we're gonna have you know, phase transitions like deep in the Earth, and we have its primordial crust preserved. Okay, next please. Okay, so we're gonna learn about the interior of Mars by placing um, a seismometer and a heat flow probe onto the surface of Mars. This is our lander, we're, we're not a rover, we're staying in one place. And uh, we'll also have a geodesy experiment that I'll talk to you a little about. Uh, it, it, we track the position of the lander uh, very precisely using these two X-band antennas. Um, next, please. Okay, so um, the last time a seismometer was put on, the, on another body, the Apollo astronauts uh, actually placed uh, several seismometers onto the moon. And, um, if you could, and uh, they also, so here's another seismometer on the surface of the moon. They also uh, use hand drills to dr dig holes uh, several meters into the ground and in place heat flow probes. So what the Apollo astronauts did uh, ro for us, we're going to do robotically on Mars. And um, uh, actually, there was one seismometer sent to Mars previously, the first mission to Mars, uh, Viking and back in the 70s, sent a seismometer. Unfortunately, they did not put it on the ground. They left it on the deck. So basically what it recorded was uh, motions of the wind that uh, caused the lander deck to vibrate. 
Um, so we're going we're gonna to do better this time and actually put it on the surface. And so what you see here is a movie of how this is going to work. The arm is picking up the seismometer, and it's going to place it on the surface. Um, this seismometer is extremely sensitive, okay? It can detect motions of the ground that are on the order of the size of a hydrogen atom. So uh, it, it will pick up uh, not only seismic waves, but it will also uh, detect if there are uh, winds coming through. And so for that reason, we, try, we put this uh, wind and thermal shield on top of it. So uh, this shield protects it to the extent possible from any uh, wind gusts that come through and uh, want to uh, shake that seismometer. Uh, it also keeps it as uh, thermally stable as we can. Um, so it's going to come down and has actually this little chain metal skirt that uh, conforms around um, the, the, any irregularities in the surface. And next what we'll do is uh, pick up our heat flow probe. And uh, inside this probe, there's a, a little, uh, it looks like a giant nail. And essentially, it uh, is like a, um, a, um, a jackhammer. So uh, I'll show you in a, in a minute a movie of how it works. It has uh, basically a, a motor that compresses a spring. That spring pushes a mass down. And those, uh, those hits of the, the mass in the ground, essentially like a you know, hammer striking a nail, ha allow it to hammer itself under the ground. And when it gets um, uh, under the ground, it pulls down another tether uh, that has a string of temperature sensors on it. So using this instrument, we can um, measure the, the heat coming out of the ground, the, ge the geothermal uh, heat flux. OK. Next. Um, and so uh, we're going to be landing uh, in Elysium Planitia. We're about 500 kilometers from Gale Crater, where the Mars Science Laboratory is. And uh, in terms of the quakes that we expect to record, I'll show you um, some uh, recent uh, faulting that occurs in this area. There's also been volcanism in the last uh, 10 million years or so. So not only from, recent, uh, from uh, ongoing activity, but also cooling of the planet, we expect to record um, uh, five or more quakes per year, up to 10 quakes per year. We also re record meteors that are striking the ground and, and causing seismic waves. Uh, you know, the, the atmosphere of Mars is uh, one one hundredth the density of the Earth. So all those things that just form, uh, you know, um, just that don't that burn up in the Earth's atmosphere and don't hit the ground will strike the ground on Mars and allow us to record those seismic signals. Next, please. Um, Okay, so these are just some of the faults that are located within um, about 1,000 kilometers from our landing site. Uh, this is a high-rise image. It's about uh, six kilometers across, and uh, this is the uh, color part in the center. So there are these extensional faults that are associated with volcanism, and so uh, there's some evidence that these have been uh, recently active, and there's clear evidence that there has been volcanic flows uh, from these features. And if I can just go through the next couple of these. These are similar features. You can see how uh, blocks are slumping off the walls of these um, faults. And um, yeah, I guess I'll keep going to make sure there's a little time here. Um, so uh, this shows uh, the uh, heat flow probe, probe, what it looks like when it's deployed underneath the surface. Um, and if you go to the, the next one, please, um, I'll show you all the instruments that we have that support uh, both the seismometer and the heat flow probe. So we have um, a couple of cameras that will be taking uh, images of this uh, sort of workspace where we're going to select a good spot for the seismometer and for the heat flow probe. Uh, we also have instruments that um, make sure that when we detect motion by these uh, seismometers, we can distinguish is it a quake or is it uh, a atmospheric effect. So we have um, a pressure sensor and we also have two uh, sensors to measure the wind. Um, with these two antennas, these X-band antennas, we have another experiment to uh, precisely determine the um, size and state of the core. So uh, imagine you have a, uh, a raw egg and a cooked egg. Okay, if you take uh, those two eggs and you put them on a table and you spin them, they wobble differently, right? The, the egg that's raw on the inside wobbles a lot more than the cooked egg, right? So Mars does the same thing. Every other planet does the same thing. Depending on its interior structure, it wobbles differently. So with these two X antennas, we're going to uh, track the position of the lander, in fact, you know, the position of the surface of Mars very precisely and see how it wobbles as it moves around in its orbit. 
and that wobble will tell us uh, quite accurately the size of the core and whether it's actually liquid or solid. Um, let's see. I guess I'll go on to the next one. And feel, feel free to ask questions. Um, OK, so I'm going to show you a little movie of how the mole works. We saw a cutaway of the, um, the spring inside. So you can see that the um, that uh, motor is actually moving the mass. The motor move, it compresses the spring. That spring is released. It pushes this um, this mass down, and it and it basically acts like a uh, hammer hitting a nail. And so this is the uh, mechanism that allows the uh, mold to emplace itself under the ground. We have another spring at the back of the mold, which um, absorbs the the recoil from from that motion of moving forward. Go ahead to the next one, please. OK, so um, just a, a couple movies of uh, the interior of Mars and what it looks like when a big uh, quake comes through. So these are uh, layers of different density. So you have uh, compressional waves and shear waves. And as those waves uh, strike a layer of different density, they're either reflected or refracted. And so this is you know, essentially how we can, are able to get the interior structure of Mars using these seismic waves. Uh, when they uh, interact with these density layers, their shape and their frequency changes. And if I go on to the next one, um, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is a seismic wave, and here's our seismometer, that triangle right over there. And at the top, you'll see what the, the signature looks like at the seismometer as these waves pass across the surface. So we can see um, both uh, shear waves, the um, the S waves and the P waves, compressional waves, and those uh, create different patterns on the surface of Mars um, and allow us to uh, distinguish how these different waves have, have uh, interacted with density layers inside the planet. OK, so uh, as I said, we are going to be um, uh, on Mars a year from now and uh, hopefully presenting data to you two years from now. And I did actually leave a little time for questions if you have any.